Pecos Bill by Stephen Kellogg, narrated by me. Back in the rugged pioneer days, when Pecos Bill was a baby, his kinfolk decided that New England was becoming entirely too crowded. So they piled into covered wagons and headed west. The clan considered settling in East Texas until Bill's ma noticed a homesteader putting up a shack about 50 miles away. Another crowded neighborhood, she grumbled. Let's push on. As they crossed the Pecos River, Bill threw out a fishing line. But when a Texas trout nibbled, Bill was yanked overboard. He was towed far downstream, and he would have drowned for sure if an old coyote hadn't grabbed him. Her family adopted Bill and taught him the ways of wild creatures. By the time Bill had outgrown his breeches, he felt like a member of the pack. He loved to romp with his coyote brothers, and as he grew older, he sometimes played with the bighorn sheep. One day, a drifter named Chuck stumbled across Bill while he was taking a nap. He asked Bill what he meant by snoozing in the brush without his trousers. Bill tried to explain that he was a coyote. Horse feathers, said Chuck. You're a Texan just like me. Bill decided to give life as a Texan a try. He borrowed Chuck's extra clothes and peppered him with questions. To tell the truth, said Chuck, most Texans are flea-bitten outlaws, and the worst of them are the Hex Gulch gang. But even they'd be okay if they'd become ranchers and herd the longhorns that wander hereabouts. Ranching sounded good to Bill, and he headed for Hex Gulch, determined to recruit the gang. But Bill's plans were interrupted when he was ambushed by a giant rattlesnake. When Bill dodged the snake's fangs, it slapped its coils around him. The snake squeezed hard, but Bill squeezed harder, and he didn't let up until every drop of the poison was out of that reptile, leaving it skinny as a rope and mild as a goldfish. Then, before Bill could catch his breath, he was tackled by a critter that was part grizzly, part puma, part gorilla, and part tarantula. They wrestled up and down the canyon and kicked up quite a dust storm, before the monster finally became so dizzy it had to quit. No one had ever tangled with those two varmints and lived to tell the tale, so when Bill met up with the Hex Gulch gang, they were thunderstruck. Who's the boss of this outfit? Bill asked. I was, mumbled Gunsmith, but now you is. Bill told the gang that he was going to turn every last one of them into respectable ranch hands, but the men claimed that Texas cattle were much too ornery to ever put up with ranching. Bill had a sudden inspiration, and he approached a longhorn that was sulking nearby. Just as the bull whirled around to trample him, Bill snagged him with the rattlesnake and yanked with all his might. Cattle roping had just been invented. Bill scared the bull out of his skin with a blood-curdling coyote howl. The embarrassed creature hightailed it off to grow a new coat, while Bill cut the hide into strips and passed them out to the men to use as lassos. Then cowboys and cattle tangled up in a rough-and-tumble hullabaloo that is remembered to this day as the first Western Rodeo. When it ended, the gang declared that they would be cowboys forever, and they promised to help Bill round up every steer in Texas. 
Hill needed a horse to ride on the big roundup. Well, said Chuck, there's a wild stallion in the mountains that some folks call lightning. Others think the name Widowmaker suits him better. But no matter what you call him, he's the fastest, most beautiful horse in the world. Bill went off in search of lightning. As soon as he saw him, Bill knew he'd found the horse for him. Bill chased lightning north to the Arctic Circle and south to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Finally, he cornered the stallion and jumped onto his back. Lightning exploded from the canyon, leaping and bucking across three states. Then Bill began to sing in the language he had heard from his coyote family. He sang of his admiration for the stallion's strength and promised him a lifetime of partnership and devotion. When Bill was done singing, he offered the horse his freedom, but Lightning chose to follow him forever. With Pecos Bill and Lightning leading them, the cowboys whooped across the state of Texas, rounding up every last steer. But their high spirits collapsed when they were faced with the job of driving that enormous herd back and forth between the summer and winter ranges. To silence their grumbling, Bill set up the perpetual motion ranch on Pinnacle Creek, which was so high that the top remained in winter, while spring and autumn turned into summer at the base. A team of prairie dogs helped Bill to fence off the mountain so the cattle could wander through the seasons unattended. Bill's plan worked fine except for Pinnacle Peak was so steep that the steers fell right off whenever there was a breeze. The men had to work harder than ever carrying the cattle back up the hill. Bill solved that problem by inventing steers with very short legs on the side of their bodies. Even in a windstorm, these cattle could stand securely on the slope as long as they kept their short-legged sides uphill. Now the men of Perpetual Motion Ranch had all kinds of free time, and Bill became known as the world's greatest cowboy. But the high point of Bill's life came when Slewfoot Sue passed by on the back of a catfish. Bill was instantly in love and he hollered a proposal of marriage. Sue agreed on two conditions. First, Bill had to buy her a wedding dress with a bustle, and second, he had to let her ride lightning to the ceremony. The first request was easy. Bill galloped to Dallas and brought back the fanciest bustled dress in the city. Sue's second request was not so simple. Although Slewfoot Sue was a first-rate rider, the moment her bustle touched the saddle, she was blasted skyward. Sue soared around the moon and began the long descent to Earth. She landed squarely on her bustle, but quick as Bill was, he couldn't get her before she bounced back into outer space. Time and time again, Sue hit the ground and rocketed back towards the stars. Sue probably would have sailed back and forth forever if Bill hadn't lassoed a tornado to help him catch his bouncing bride. The pair of them clung to that careening storm until it blew itself out over California. To Bill's amazement, he and Sue landed on top of his Ma and Pa's wagon. Bill couldn't believe his kinfolk were still searching for a home site. He told them they could spend the rest of their days roaming, but they'd never find a place equal to Texas. Everyone returned to Bill's ranch for a wing-ding of a family reunion. And today their descendants are still there, happily herding cattle. This book was recorded for Eric, my little buddy, Eric. Happy birthday, Eric. Grandma and Grandpa love you very much. You're one tough little kid, and this book fits you.